right. Welcome to Church Spring Live. I'm Ron Gibson. I'm the co-founder of Church Spring, and joining me today is my co-host, Isabel Folletti. Hello. Great to see everybody. I'm the customer success lead here at Church Spring, and I'm excited to dive right in on this. Yes, we have got a power-packed first episode uh, for today, and uh, we just want to thank you all for joining us. So if you wouldn't mind, we'd love to um, hear where you're from, where you're joining today. Um, so you can feel free, go ahead and post it um, in the comments below. And uh, we really look forward to engaging with you throughout um, all of our Church Spring Live. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what we're going to be doing um, here moving forward. So again, this is our very first episode. Woo! I, I would be lying if I wasn't saying my 10-year-old coined the term nervous sighted. So a little <laughs> nervous and a little excited. And we're all of the above, but man, we really count it a true privilege um, to serve you. And we are excited about what God's going to do um, in us through this, as well as what he's going to do um, in the church through this. So we're just super excited about that. So a couple of quick things, a couple of quick agenda items here. So what to expect. Um, so we are going to start doing this as a weekly show. We know there's going to be all types of churches that are going to join us, some that use church spring, some that don't. Wonderful. We're excited to serve the church as a whole, whether you are a Church Spring member or not. Um, so we just really count it a true privilege um, to serve those who are on the front lines um, in ministry. Um, so we're going to do a lot of different things. This will go all over the place. If you talk to anybody on the Church Spring team, they'll tell you, uh, if you don't like it, just wait, because we'll change it and we'll improve it. And we'd love to hear your feedback. So if you have feedback on the show, things you would like us to consider doing, Again, we want this to be um, very engaging and not just a one-way conversation. So please leave comments. Um, there's actually a little StreamYard link that we want you to click on, and it will actually give us then permission to show your question um, with a little profile picture of you so we can put a face with a name, which is always uh, super beneficial. All right, so we're going to have free resources. We're going to share how-tos. We're going to share product updates about what's going on at Church Spring. We're going to bring on expert interviews. Um, man, we've got we've already talked about some of the people that we want to bring onto the show and talk about several different areas. So give us some feedback. What are some things you would like to hear about? Um, a couple of things we've talked about is uh, bringing someone on who is a digital marketing expert. Uh, literally, he's what uh, Google used to call a five specialist is what it was what it was called. I don't know if it's called that now or not. Um, but he basically had every certifications that Google offered to come in and actually teach us things like Google Analytics. Um, bringing another expert on in the area of Facebook advertising, that's just a massive opportunity in the church. Talk to a gentleman who runs live streaming for many churches across the country. Um, he and his team actually run uh, live streaming uh, for a 10,000 member church, but he works with churches from 10,000 plus members to small 150 member churches. And he just wants to donate his time. He just wants to come and be a blessing to the church. So we are super excited. So let us know in the comments, what are some things specifically that would be super helpful for you? Because that's our goal. Um, we want to add as much value as we can, and we want to serve you um, the best way possible. Another thing we've talked about doing is website reviews. So actually mm -hmm. pulling up um, different churches' website that are interested in having their, their website reviewed, going down through it, literally live making recommendations on areas that you can improve your church website. So we're excited about those possibilities as well as question and answer and so much more. And Isabel, I'm sure I've forgot some of the ideas that we've thrown out over the last uh, <laughs> little bit. So well, we, we, we have a lot of ideas. So you can all uh, rest easy knowing that you will be served um, in a lot of different ways here. So we're, we're excited to try a couple different things. And like Ron said, we want to hear back from you of what works and, and kind of what you want to see in the future. Yes. Awesome. So we are going to do this weekly. Um, so you can put it on your schedule. That'd be awesome. Um, we are going to do these Thursdays at 10 a.m. Central Time. So you can join us every week at Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And our goal is to serve you and engage with you and really um, have a conversation with you about um, how to best reach our communities, how to best disciple the people in our church. Um, ultimately, yes, Church Spring. Um, we are a church technology company, but we are co committed to the Great Commission and reaching people, teaching people, and sending those who are called out to do the work that God's, um, yeah, ultimately called them to do, because that's what we're doing. Um, this is what we feel God's called us to, 
And um, we really want to serve the church in um, all the ways possible that God leads us to serve. So uh, if you do, again, if you have any questions as we go through this first episode, uh, please put them in the comments. We're going to address as many of those as we can um, during and definitely at the end. We'll have a Q&A section at the end. But basically the framework of what we're going to do today is we're going to um, do just a quick Keep me, keep me to that, Isabel. We're going to do a quick um, teaching on the effective church website checklist. Okay. So I'm going to give you a quick 10 item things that you should consider not only to launch an effective church website, but also if you have an existing church website, it doesn't mean, oh, well, that's past for me. These are some opportunities that you yourself could also look at your own church website and see if there's opportunities for improvements there and then start taking action on those. We're going to do some how to's. Um, so today we're going to talk about a, a couple of different things that you can do to to improve your church website and how to utilize some of the functionality in your church website. And again, um, we're going to show that inside of Church Spring, but these principles and the things that we're going to talk about apply no matter what software you use. So obviously we would love to serve you, but we also know and acknowledge we are not the perfect fit for every single church out there. We're not trying to be, we're not trying to be everything to everybody, um, but we do want to add value regardless of what platform you use. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of tips there. Then we're going to hit question and answer. Um, so we're going to curate and try to work through as many questions as we can uh, during our time today. Um, we are going to take prayer requests. So if you do have a prayer request today, please share it. Um, prayer is just a powerful gift that God's given us. And um, we have prayer requests that come in every single week at Church Spring. We actually have an email that goes out to our customers asking for prayer requests because we want to pray for you. Um, we have a team meeting every Monday. We pray for requests. Um, I know personally, as well as members of my team, when those requests come in, they get posted in a Slack channel, which is a communications tool that we use. And um, when I'm going through Slack, I literally pause right then and pray uh, for those requests that come in. So please submit those um, requests here. If you don't feel comfortable submitting your requests here, but you would still like us to pray for you, please visit churchspring.com, click on contact us. We have a contact form. You can submit your request there and we will absolutely, um, yeah, bring that up and, and, uh, and pray for you. So please do that. And we're going to go from there. So we are already eight minutes and 20 seconds in, um, but we're going to try to keep these shows moving forward. Ultimately, we're not going to just, you know, we want to be respectful of your time and we want to add value, but we also know that, um, you know, yes, your time is valuable, but sometimes it does take a little bit longer. So we're not going to be too um, stringent and rigid yeah. on a 30 minute show. However, we're going to try to keep it inside of 30 minutes. Yeah. Isabel smiling over there because she knows <laughs> that, <laughs> that will probably be um, my specific. I have my stopwatch over here. No big deal. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So let me see. I think that's uh, everything we had um, talk about. Did I miss anything, Isabel? No, I think we're good. Okay, perfect. So if you haven't liked our page, please do that. Obviously, if you're getting this, I know there were some people that were talking about sharing it when we were we were talking about it. So maybe you don't like our page. Please like us mm -hmm. on um, on Facebook. We are going to be in the future creating events where then you can say you're coming and you'll get reminders and things like that. We all know we're busy. Um, full-time ministry is not a part-time job. Um, so we understand you're busy, but definitely if you want to earmark it on your calendar, again, Thursdays, 10 a.m. Central Time, put that on your calendar. And then we'll also, again, do as, uh, as much as we can uh, to let you know when things are going to go live. So let's jump into our core teaching now. So let me um, share my screen. There we go. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about 10 items that are ultimately things that should be on your checklist for an effective church website. So I want to, I want to preface it with this. Um, it's good to stay hydrated. So Isabel's leading by example over there. Awesome, Isabel. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick drink of water myself because my mouth's already uh, getting dry here. So <laughs> take a quick sip of water, get the juices flowing here. Um, secondly, I want you to grab a pen and a piece of paper. There's going to be some things that we're going to discuss today. And we don't want this just to be a time where you're sitting consuming. Right. Um, we want to teach you and we want to add value. But ultimately, we want you to take action on some of the things that, that maybe are those top action items that you need to move forward with. Okay, so 
get your pen and paper ready, take notes. Um, what we want you to do as you go through this is take notes. And then at the end, we're going to have you do a little exercise where you go through and you say, this is my number one priority. This is the area that we need to improve on our church website. And then I want you to take action on that. Okay. That this is all about action. We can give you the coolest tools and some of the best information out there. But all of it, if all this is, is just a video that sits on a server and no one take action on it. Um, it's only going to be as good as that. So we want you to take action. All right. Um, so one question I have as we get started, and I know this is a very soft launch for Church Spring Live. Um, so we may not have a ton of people chatting in today, and that's just fine. But even if you're watching the video after the fact, I'd love to hear from you. So please put your comment below. And the, the, the question for today that I'd love to hear a comment on is, what is the number one goal of your church website? What is the thing that you want to see happen or the value that you want to you want to receive from your church website. So I really hesitate giving examples because I don't want to persuade anybody in a specific direction, um, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just to get the juices flowing. So it could be something like, I want to hear people say that they found us online and they came and visited our church because they found our church website and then they found enough information there. It led them to come and visit our church website and then Lord willing, get involved and become part of the ministry. Another um, goal could be, I don't want to hear people say, I didn't know anymore. Like how many times do you hear that where um, somebody will miss an event? say, I didn't know that it was even going on, you know? So maybe that's a goal. So it's about communicating with your existing church members. So if you have that, I would love to um, hear it. So please put your comment. Don't be bashful. Um, and again, even if you're watching this after the fact, please put it in the comments below. I'd absolutely love to, to read those and we'll engage with you and maybe ask even some clarifying questions there in the comments. All right. So I think we are ready to dig in. So let's get going. The effective church website checklist. So just like when a plane gets ready to take off and a pilot, if you've flown commercially, a pilot walks around the airplane and they do a pre-flight check to make sure that this plane is ready for takeoff and a safe flight and a safe landing. What we're gonna do is very similar to that today. We're gonna go through the checklist of what needs to be done and reviewed on your church website to make sure that it's effective and then it accomplishes the ultimate goal that you would like it to achieve. So I don't know if this picture resonates <laughs> with many of you, but before we started Church Spring, we actually surveyed thousands of pastors asking them multiple questions and one of the things that we heard back that I personally heard back because they would reply to my emails um, graciously would reply to emails. And they basically told us that their, their website was just a major source of pain or frustration. They did not feel like, you know, what, what is it even there for? Why do I really even need a church website? Can't I just use Facebook? Like, can I just do that? And there was just so many questions and so much frustration around the church website. And what we want to do today is get rid of that pain, get rid of that frustration and give you an exact roadmap that you can use to build an effective church website. So here's my promise to you today. My promise to you today is I wanna take the guesswork and frustration out of launching or improving your church website. I wanna say that again. My goal today is to take the guesswork and frustration out of launching or improving your church website. So let's dig in. Number one, the number one thing that you need to do is purchase a high quality domain name. So what do I mean by a high quality domain name? First of all, it should be short, it should be sweet, and it should be memorable, okay? So we see a lot of things at Church Spring. Um, and Isabel, she's on the front lines and she's seeing a lot of different things. And we see some URLs that are like short paragraphs. Yep. Um, it's true. And, and, I, and I wish I could say that was like a dramatic overstatement, it's not. <laughs> but it's not, but it's not your fault. It's, I right. mean, if, if, if you're sitting there and you're like, oh my goodness, our, our domain name is super long. Don't, don't judge yourself. This isn't what you, you know, do for a living and we want to help you. Yeah. So number one, make it short and easy to remember. Number two, if at all possible, try to go with a dot com. Dot com is the most used. That is what people think of when they think of going to a website. There's a lot of other extensions that you could use, such as dot org, dot church. Um, a lot of people are big advocates of dot church. Um, 
I'm not saying don't secure that domain name, but I would make the .com your main domain. So um, number three, own, own your domain. Isabel could share yep. many a story of when they sign up for a church website provider, they also purchase the domain through that person, which by the way, most of those people are just reselling somebody else's services, which then makes it extremely difficult when it comes to making changes or anything like that. So when somebody signs up with church spring, we don't provide a domain because we want you to own your own address. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have any way ownership of that. That's yours. Yeah. You own it. And we want you that if you ever decide to make changes to it, and there's a lot of things we'll talk about domain names here in future episodes. Um, there's a lot of things connected to your domain name. So You absolutely want to have full control and full ownership of your name, domain name. So there's a couple of sites that I'd recommend you check out. The first one is namecheap.com. Um, it's super easy. Go find domains that are available and um, go ahead and purchase it. Um, another one is godaddy.com. While I'm not a massive fan of their advertising, to be perfectly honest, um, they do have um, some great services and domain names are just one of their, really what they're known for. Um, yeah. So namecheap.com or godaddy.com. One thing I failed to mention earlier, I'm going to, I'm going to fly through these things. Okay. So we are going to come back over the next 10 to 12 weeks and we're going to dive more into each one of these topics. Okay. So I'm not going to cover everything with domains about domain name servers and how to manage that and how to do all these different aspects. We're going to cover that in a future episode. Okay. So if you do have questions, let us know. We'll make sure we address as many of those as we can here, but also in a future episode uh, here of Church Spring, Church Spring Live, okay? So number one, purchase a high quality domain name. Number two, select a reliable website hosting provider. Why is that important? Site speed is one of the major ranking factors with Google. That, By the way, there are thousands of ranking factors inside of the Google algorithm. It doesn't matter how good your website is if no one can actually find you, right? So if somebody does a search for, I'll use the town that I grew up in, Zanesville, Ohio. If somebody does a search for churches in Zanesville, Ohio, and your website isn't optimized to actually show up in those results, you just have a really beautiful tree out in the middle of a forest that nobody's ever gonna find, okay? so. Site speed is very important, and that's why you want to make sure you select a reliable website hosting provider. A thing to consider is that there are providers out there that bundle hosting into their website services. ChurchSpring is an example of that. When you come to ChurchSpring, you do not have to, okay, well, here's my website content management system, and I need to go find a provider for my, my website hosting. Um, you don't have to do that with ChurchSpring. We bundled it together and made it super easy. And we run on some of the fastest servers on the planet. Um, we use Amazon um, Web Services, which many, I, I forget, I think it's like 50% of the web, if I'm not mistaken, or greater runs on Amazon Web Services. So basically if our servers go down, like the internet, half of the internet is practically down. Um, so super important, select a reliable website hosting provider that offers very fast servers, and um, to make sure that your website ranks highly there in Google from that yeah. perspective. And I'll just pop in real quick on that. Yes. Um, coming from the customer support and success side, I see custom domains and hosting that can be really confusing um, to people who are new to the website world. So if you're listening and if you're just confused about what, so what do I do? Where do I even start? Don't worry, don't panic. That's why we're doing these exact video. So in the times to come, we, like Ron said, we'll, we'll dig into it deeper and you can always ask questions. You can shoot us an email. Um, so don't panic if you're confused. This is just to kind of start lay, laying out the path for you. And then we will walk alongside you and explain things in a really easy to understand manner. Yes, Isabel has become quite the expert on domain names over the I last few months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. So number two there, um, select a reliable website hosting provider. Number three, set up a website with responsive design. So what does that mean? Responsive design means that you have one website 
that looks good and appropriate no matter what the screen size you're on. So whether you're on a desktop computer with a big 27 inch screen like I have sitting in front of me, or whether you're on a laptop or whether you're on an iPad or whatever mobile device tablet that you have or whatever mobile device you're on, it's going to look good. Back in the day, and there are still a lot of church websites that still do this, they have like a separate mobile site. We're not talking mobile app, we're talking about a mobile website. And that's actually um, not good. You wanna create the same experience of the same content, have one, one place that you have to manage um, for your church website. And that's why responsive design is so very important. You may not know this, but depending on your site and where you're located, over 70% plus of website traffic to your church website could be coming from a mobile device. That's enormous. And the rise of mobile isn't going to go away anytime soon. You look at internet speeds getting faster through mobile carriers, and I could really nerd out here. And by the way, <laughs> we look at that as a affectionate term here at Church Spring. Um, <laughs> but like, we could really go into that. But the thing you need to know is that think mobile first over 70% of your traffic could be, depending on your location and where you're at, could be coming from mobile devices. And again, you have one website that's adaptable, that adapts itself to all the different screen sizes. So definitely you need a responsive, mobile-friendly church website. All right, next, select an easy content management system. So there's a ton, and that's an understatement, a ton of content management systems available for uh, for churches today. Some that are specifically geared toward the church, some that are not geared toward the church, but are more mass used. At the end of the day, you have to do two things. Number one, know what you're looking for. And number two, know your own skill set. What are your, what's your skill set? Okay. So we've built church spring and this is exactly how we started. Um, my father-in-law, is a pastor and it was my mother-in-law who was responsible to manage the church website and at the time she was in her late 60s and um she was really struggling i had lots of conversations with them on difficulty with certain aspects so our goal when we started church spring was to make it so she my mother-in-law could manage launch and manage her own church website so we have made it so literally you can launch your site in 90 seconds. And this is not a sales pitch, I promise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get here. Launch your site in 90 seconds. And we've made it so literally when you edit your site, it's in line. So instead of having to log into some backend system, make your changes, click save, and then go to a different tab or even a different browser to look, okay, did that look like what I want it to look like? Um, we've taken that away where literally you click on the editable regions of your site, you make your edits, you click save and it's there. Super easy, super simple. If you have very basic, um, we'll just say word processing, uh, whether that's Microsoft Word, Google Docs, whatever, you can update and manage your church website effectively, okay? So inline editing, is that important to you? Are you a programmer? Do you enjoy writing code both from a back end side of things? Or oh, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. No, I, I don't want to have to sit down and, and write code. So, but if that's something you want, <clears throat> then you want to make sure that you choose a content management system that allows you to do that. One of the beauties of Church Spring is we actually offer you some of the customization options through if you're a Let's say that you're a front end developer and you know CSS, which is the programming language kind of of design. That's the simple, concise version of what CSS is. Well, you have some options to be able to go in and make those customizations that you would like. So number one, select an easy content management system. Know what you want in a content management system and understand your skill set, and then align yourself appropriately to the content management system that best fits your needs. Next, set up your start here, contact us and leadership pages. So you wanna make it as easy as possible for brand new visitors who just came across you online to find exactly what they're looking for. A start here page, which you honestly, we don't see it enough on church websites. It just makes it super clear to a first time visitor to your site, here's where I need to go. It literally says, start here. And then you tell them you have content under there that talks about, 
you know, your leadership pages, who's the pastor, who's the leadership of the church, what to expect, um, your statement of faith, all of those things can be included right there under that start here tab, which is what people are going to look for when they are looking um, to come potentially visit your church. Okay. Um, contact us page. You want to make it easy for them to reach out to you. We're actually going to cover that a little bit more here uh, later on exactly how to set that up. And then your leadership page, who are the people behind this? Um, one quick extra tip I wasn't planning on saying, but it, Lord brought it to mind. So I'm going to say it. When you write your bio as a church leader, don't feel like you are writing a resume. That's not what people want to see. I'm not saying don't include education if you've served at past you know, ministries to give context, but be personable, be friendly, act like literally you're walking up to somebody on the sidewalk and you're, you're, you're sticking out your hand to shake their hand. Would you say, Hey, I graduated from so-and-so and so with this degree. And I've had experience at all these places. You wouldn't, that's not how you would communicate to them. So don't do that here either. Be friendly, be warm. Yes. Share those pertinent details, but that's just a little piece of feedback and hopefully encouragement and something you could review on your existing website of, is that an area of opportunity for you to improve on your church website? All right, next, integrate social media. Social media is one of the most powerful church communication tools in the world today. Now, I wanna be very clear. Facebook is not your church website. You don't own Facebook. Facebook at any time, which they do this, and you've all experienced it. Number one, um, there are times where there's content that they pull off for whatever reason that they feel um, doesn't meet their meet their guidelines. You don't own the platform. Facebook does. Okay. So it's very important that this is to be a complementary tool to your main home base digitally, which is your church website. Okay. So it's a powerful tool. Leverage it, but don't act like you own it. Um, and then put everything there. Your church website is that digital home base for your church. Why should you use social media? 75% of all internet users, all globally engage with social media. That is a powerful tool to reach people. You know, you'll hear, you'll hear us moving forward, use different terms. So if you look at the umbrella of discipleship, it's reaching people, teaching people, and really activating slash sending people to do what God's called them to do. So social media can be a powerful tool to do all the above, but reaching is one of those real areas where social media really excels. So um, utilize it, but utilize it correctly, correctly, and then find a church website provider that integrates with it. Um, one, of the, one of the really cool tools that we've added um, with Church Ring is that literally when you go and you add an event or you add a sermon or you add a blog post to your church website, you can actually schedule your social media posts right inside of Church Spring. So there are other providers that do this again. So I'm not going to act like we're some unique, we're the only people out there that do this because we're not. However, Church Spring integrates that right out of the box. If you choose our, I believe it's the Flourish plan, um, that comes right out of the box. You don't have to install any plugins or do any of that. You literally co co connect Church Spring to your Facebook or even your Twitter account. And then you schedule your posts and we automatically post them for you. Um, so anyway, some things to think about there. Integrate social media into your church website. Next, set up a Google Analytics account. And your eyes may go cross right now because analytics, what? Um, so was that? It can be scary to some people and that's okay. <laughs> yes, yes. And we're like I said, we're going to do a future um, episode really diving into Google Analytics, what it is, how it works, how you can set it up very quickly um, on your church website. So number one, and we talk to a lot of pastors every week, but one of the things that it just seems like is a little bit of a common thread is that there's no goal. What is the thing that you want to accomplish with your church website? Like you can literally connect goals, like tangible, okay, I wanna have people come to our site or come to our services. I want to um, increase giving you know, by integrating online giving, I want to better communicate, you know, with my uh, church members. So attendance to events or things like that. I mean, there's so many ways. That's just a really quick examples, but have goals. So set goals and then define what does success look like for your church website? Define that and then measure it. Um, Peter Drucker, who was a big management um, and leadership expert, 
uh, had a famous quote that basically what gets measured gets managed. Okay. So set a goal and then set a week, you know, maybe even a monthly check-in with yourself where you go back and you look, here's the goals I set. How is our church website doing at actually helping us accomplish those goals? So Google analytics is a powerful tool that can help you do that. So again, we'll talk more about that in a future episode, but definitely if you, if the action item is just go and check out Google analytics to start familiarizing yourself with it, I would highly encourage you to do so. Next, Add sermon, audio, and video to your church website. Here's the reality. Depending on where you're located, um, I live in a rural area, and we actually have more people attend and watch our services digitally than we do actually show up. And they're, they're from all over the world, from people listening to audio sermons or coming and watching our live stream. And obviously, you know, in the times that we live in today with the pandemic, I praise the Lord, we're coming out of that. However, those are valuable tools that you as a church should be utilizing to not only minister to your local congregation, to your local community, but there are people searching online. There are people searching online for the truth and God could use you and your ministry and your church to re reach those people with the truth and the hope of Jesus Christ. So I'd encourage you, add sermon, audio, and video. It's super easy with Church Spring comes built right in. So um, definitely add sermon audio and video to your church website. Also, you can have a podcast um, and then focus on ministry beyond Sunday. Your website is the only thing that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Get the content on there and really minister to those people that come across your site. So add sermon audio and video to your church website. Next, set up a blog on your church website. So many churches, A, they don't have a blog, or B, if they have a blog, they delete it because they don't really know how to utilize it effectively. With what we just came through as a world, the blog was one of the most underutilized facets of a church communications platform. It is the way where you can post things. So what, what is a blog? A blog is a place where basically you can go and do multiple posts. So I can post something today. Hey, church is closed tomorrow. We're going to be live stream only. Here's some things you need to know preparing yourself uh, for the service tomorrow. Um, and then in the morning, here's another update. And it just basically is a chronological list of posts that you can use to keep your congregation up to date on different things going on um, in the ministry. So use that tool. There's so many other applications. You could do a weekly devotional. Um, one of the things that my pastor's doing, which I absolutely love, is um, every Thursday or Friday, he sends out an email basically with, here's the scripture that we're going to talk about on Sunday. Here's some things you can be praying about. So then when we come into the church, like we can have our hearts and our minds ready for what God has for us. That's a great way. Again, another great way to use your blog on your church website. So it's an incredible ministry tool when used correctly. If you have questions on how to use the blog, again, comment. We'd love to hear um, your thoughts on that, what your questions are. We would love to answer those. All right. Integrate live streaming into your church website. This nearly goes without saying after the last several months that we've been through. Um, it's definitely heightened a need that has always been there. That need has always been there. But obviously it was very much heightened with the reality that many churches, most churches online, I don't want to say was the only option, but was a very popular option um, for the church. So in a great live streaming, it's incredible for reach. I can't tell you how many people I run the live stream by my own church. So this, I'm just not a co-founder of a software company who's not involved actively in ministry. Like, no, I'm actually the one running the live streaming um, at our church. And I can't tell you how unbelievable, unbelievable it is to see the reach of live streaming. It's powerful, powerful. Um, so highly encourage you to integrate live streaming accessibility. People can come to your website watch your live stream, depending on what service you're using for that. They can click, go to um, Facebook as an example, which is where you're watching this live stream. They can be on their mobile device, sitting in their car. They can pull it up, watch the live stream. So an incredible reach, incredible accessibility. And then again, make sure that it's integrated with your church website. Church Spring comes out of the box with countdown clocks. It's tied to events. So literally all you have to do is create an event. Say it's, it's gonna be a live stream. And we handle a ton of the heavy lifting for you. Um, so 
um, definitely consider if you're not already integrating live stream into your church website. Um, so we've covered a lot, a lot, 35, almost 36 minutes of content. And I kind of knew it was going to go long. Um, <laughs> but I hope that that was valuable for you. It also may feel a little overwhelming. So what I would tell you, number one, is you got this. Pray, ask God to give you clarity on what are the next steps that he would have you take to improve your church website. Pray about it. Give it to God. Surrender it to him. He will guide you. So it's time to take action. What is the number one thing? Is it we're not live streaming right now? You know, if there's anything the pandemic has taught us, we need to be ready. This is an area of outreach that we need to start um, really looking at. How can we reach people um, in our community as well as even outside of our community with the truth through utilizing live streaming services? Um, so what's the number one thing you can take action on? And then lastly, before I hand it over and we start doing um, some how-tos, rewatch the video. So one of the really cool things is that after this live stream is over, it's going to post into our video section and you can go back and you can watch it and rewatch it and rewatch it however many times you need to at your own pace to really determine, okay, what are the next steps I'm going to take? Okay, I, that's my number one step. I need to simplify a domain name. All right, I'm going to go do that. Boom, that's done. All right, what's, what else do I have on my list? Okay, now here's the next action item that I'm going to take. You can do this. You can absolutely do this. Go back and rewatch the video as needed to get the tools and the resources that you need, as well as let us know if there's questions you have and things we can do to help. All right, so now we're going to get super practical on how to do specific things. So two things we're going to cover. We talked about the contact form, right? So you need to add the pages to your website. And one of the pages that we talked about adding is the contact form. So we're going to show you how to do that. And next, um, Isabel is going to walk us through how to add or create a sheet, short URL for your site. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jump in. Awesome. Thanks, Ron. Wow. I'm, I'm encouraged to start updating my church's website now after <laughs> a really good checklist. <laughs> um, yeah. So kind of what Ron mentioned, your contact page is so important when your website is open 24 seven. So if you have a new visitor or a church member coming to your website, you need to know how to contact you. And it needs to be easy, it needs to be simple um, for them to identify that page and to find a form or an email to contact you. Um, so with Church Spring, and I will enlarge my screen here. Okay. Um, so with Church Spring, as Ron mentioned, we you can launch a website in 90 seconds flat. Um, and a big part of that is because when you get your website, you have all of these pages. Um, that are automatically created for you. And we add some default text that we put some time into um, so that you don't have to be creating your website text and page from scratch. So one, one of those pages that we create for you is the contact page. Um, so it's super slick, really, really just amazing how it works. Um, Ron and Mike are co-founders. They've done a great job at creating this. Um, also, before I get into too much of the weeds here, since we are live streaming, uh, my screen may be a bit slow as my internet does the live streaming and works on a website and buffers everything on my computer. So if you see if there's some pause, that's the reason why. Um, so with the contact form, when you create a contact page, this is the page that you will immediately see. Um, so you'll see that there's some default text already written out for you. And then the form is already added to your page. Um, so then all that you have to do is you can edit this text um, and you simply click into the pencil icon that kind of represents the editing capabilities throughout your entire church swing website. Um, and then you can very easily remove this text if you want. You can update the text. So if you want to say, um, for media assistance, please call um, our church office and then you can update the phone number to whatever you want it to be. Um, and then you can hit save and it will automatically save in real time. Um, so you won't have to do some type of 
save once and then twice for it to go live. Once you hit save, it's live out there. Um, so you can update this text to whatever you want to. You can change the headline here. Um, we'll get into kind of text editing capabilities at a later time. Um, so then for the contact form, that is this section right here, um, people will be able to fill out the their full name, add their email, and then any specific message. So again, this is this top edit section. This is a great way if you want people to include a specific message, you can, you can include that right here. Um, so I just wanna dive into the form settings here. So um, right now when a visitor comes to your page, they go to your contact page, they submit a contact form, um, you can designate who will receive this contact form. So when someone fills out that form and you need the secretary or the pastor at your church to receive this form so that they'll know to contact um, the person who's, who's reaching out to you, um, you can edit the contact form recipients. So you can add as many emails as you want. So you could do, um, let's say admin at your email.com um, and then you can add a comma to add as many different email addresses to receive a notification that someone's filled out your contact form. Um, you can also update the email subject or the, the default email subject here. So right now this form is on the contact page. Um, so I would want this to be the contact us page form inquiry. But if this is for a prayer request, if this form is on a prayer request page, then I could just update the subject to say prayer request form inquiry, and then hit save. Um, one really cool feature is that um, we show the map of your church location to the right here. If you don't want that, that's okay. You can uncheck that option, hit save, and again, it automatically updates in real time. So pretty slick. Um, so that's kind of the basics of the form settings. Um, I see a lot of customers use our contact form in a variety of ways. It is, you can use it in a ton, a ton of different ways. Um, so one thing that I see our customers use consistently that I love is they use the contact uh, form for a prayer request page. Um, so I'll just run down that real quick here. Um, and again, we will we'll cover other areas of how to actually add pages in depth at a later time. So some areas may be a little fast for you, um, but just drop a comment um, in the video here and we'll answer any questions that you have. So if someone would want to add a prayer request page, um, then they would simply click add a new page, add prayer whoop, request, and then select the contact form page style. So um, when you select the contact form page style and hit save and continue, you'll see that a new page is automatically created with the entire template all ready to go for you. So a background image, um, this default text I talked about, the form. Um, so then at this point, all you have to do is edit this text to what you would want um, it to be. So you could say, send in your prayers um, and then edit again this text to um, what you want it to relevant to that page hit save um, and then you can update the form settings to say you would want um, someone who's in charge of receiving prayer requests and your whoever's your your prayer minister um, then you can add that um, also on the email recipient same thing with the email subject you could do prayer requests. Um, and then for a prayer request page, I would probably hide the maps and this, since that's not really relevant um, and then hit save. Oh, and let me, um, let me hit save. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's how you can very simply add a prayer request page. Um, Super simple. Again, if you have questions, comment below. If you're a current customer of Church Spring, we would love to hear from you. You can send in a support ticket and we'll help help you out, answer any questions. Um, 
So that kind of transitions into the next area that I wanted to give a quick rundown, and that's creating a short URL. So a short URL is basically an easy way that you can take a very long URL like I have up here, um, and you can make it super easy for people to find this page by a short URL. So I'll go into more details on that here. Um, so for example, on this prayer request page, it is our subdomain name, so isabeldemo.churchspring.org, and then the main page name, contact us, and then the actual page name us, prayer request. So that's a really long URL. So if you're wanting to tell people how they can submit a prayer request, people won't remember that. That's, that's a crazy long string for people to remember. So instead, I want to create a URL um, that would be super short, that would direct people to this page. So it would be isabeldemo, dot churchspring.org slash prayer. Nice and simple, easy to put on social media or your, your slides um, on Sunday morning. So to that in your website, um, you will click the settings and I'm on the flourish plan right now. Um, so the settings is on the left panel. So if you're a current church spring member and you're on the sprout or the grow plan, then your settings will be at the top right section. Um, so, but the settings, it's, it's the same setup in the back. Um, so when I click into settings, this is my, my dashboard. I wanna click onto the website tab and then click into URL redirects. Um, so URL redirects is what we call a short URL. Those are the, the it means the same thing. Um, and then we, we kind of have a, a, a brief description of how you can use it, the URL redirect. So in my example here, you just start and select this plus icon and then that'll um, pull up two little sections or boxes here. Um, so you're starting your URL. This is what you want people to type in to go to your end destination. So for example, with the prayer request page, I want people to go to my my subdomain. So that will always be automatically filled up. Um, if you have a custom domain, this will automatically be updated with your custom domain. Um, and I just want people to be able to go to my website slash prayer. Nice and easy for people to remember. And then the forwards to, this is again, your end destination page. So for prayer requests, um, I don't, this is where I want people to end up at. So I'll just copy this URL. Um, so you can do a keyboard shortcut or you can just right click and copy. And then I'll go back into my settings that I have open in a new tab. And then I will simply paste that URL right here into the forwards to box. And then I'll hit save. And that's all I need to do. And so then to test it out, I'll just copy the starting URL. I'll open in a new tab so I can show you how it'll work. I'll paste that URL, and then you'll see that it will automatically redirect to that prayer request page that I just made. Um, so again, this is a really easy way to make a long string, super short and concise. Um, so then you can tell people to um, submit their prayer requests, and you can just have that short URL on social media, um, when you're doing a live stream video, when you're wherever you need to. So that's how you can create a short URL. Pretty simple. Again, if you have questions about it, send us a ticket in your um, settings that we just showed you here in your support ticket tab. Um, if you're not yet a customer of us and you just want to learn more about how this even works, how, how this is so easy to use, um, then we have a really cool demo webinar where Ron and our other co-founder Mike will walk you through um, some frequent, frequently asked questions and show you all the bells and whistles of Church Spring. So there you go. If you have questions again, let us know. We want to help out. Awesome. Thanks so much for walking people through that. I think one super practical application for us right now, you know, with where kind of we're at coming off the tail end of the pandemic and a lot of churches are starting to open up again. I think a great use case for um, the short URL is actually just creating church.com forward slash opening or open, mm -hmm. and then just tell people to go there. 
And then you can constantly update that page and people know exactly where to go, what to expect when they come to church, what are your so social distancing or cleaning standards or whatever that is that you want to put out there and make public as we go through this kind of phase of, of where we're at in the world. Um, that's another great application for um, how you can utilize that. So I would highly recommend um, that you check that out. Um, let's see. I don't think we've had any <clears throat> excuse me, questions come in. Let me just double check that. Yep. None today, which is just fine. We actually didn't really promote or advertise this at all. Um, so if you do have questions, please ask. Um, yeah. Obviously, like I said, this video is going to post. We would love to answer your questions um, in a future episode. Um, obviously, this episode is going a little long, so maybe it's uh, it's good. We don't have a ton of questions today, but please know we want to answer your questions. We want to be a blessing to you and your ministry. Um, as you seek to reach people for Christ in your local context. So um, please do that. I would like to invite you to join us. Um, so if you have not already, I would encourage you, if anything you've seen in this video, it's like, my goodness, what she just did looks so easy compared to what I have to do today. And you can relate with the girl that I showed early on in the video that just looks stressed out. I would highly encourage you to do two things. Number one, um, and Isabel alluded to this, we would love to invite you to join us for a demo. Um, basically what we do with that is we literally walk you through how to launch an effective church website. So if you um, have not had the opportunity to join us, um, we'd love to have you join us, myself as well as my co-founder, uh, Mike, we walk you through that. We have live chat support uh, Monday through Friday. So as you have questions, um, I should say Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, and then if you have questions outside of that, definitely reach out to us. Um, but you can see it firsthand exactly how it works. Um, so definitely um, check that out. And that's churchspring.com forward slash demo. Then if you're ready to say, hey, I want to just give this a shot. Like, how can I do that? We offer a seven day free trial. So literally zero commitment. You sign up, you get full support. We don't treat you like some person over here that, well, you haven't given us any money, so therefore we're not going to support you. Um, after you sign up, you'll actually get a complimentary call from um, one of our team members to make sure that you have exactly what you need, answer any questions you have. We want to add value to you and help you accomplish whatever the goal is yeah. that you have for your church website. So if you're interested in doing that, you can go to this URL right here on the screen and start your free trial in less than 90 seconds, churchspring.com forward slash trial. We'd love to have you join us as a member of the Church Spring family. And uh, even if it's just to give it a shot and uh, see if it's a good um, fit for your ministry. So we are going to close in prayer. Um, prayer is so important. Um, it is such a gift that God's given us. And um, we want to uphold you in prayer. So um, I haven't seen any prayer requests come in. Uh, but like I said, we get prayer requests all throughout the week because we actually ask um, our members to let us know um, what their prayer requests are. So I'm going to pull up um, our Slack channel here, not on the screen, but just uh, on my screen. Um, and we actually had a, a prayer request come in yesterday from Pastor Melvin. And um, he, and I'm sure this resonates with many of you, um, he asked us to pray. We're resuming services this Sunday. Pray for God's grace and presence with us. And um, I know many of you are in that place. You're navigating. What does this look like to reopen? Um, and here's what I can tell you. God knows this was not a surprise. This wasn't a surprise to God. Um, doesn't mean it's easy, but it wasn't a surprise to God. And he will show you the way. And we want to pray for you, pray with you. Um, so if you do have any other prayer requests, even after this recording goes um, on the site, the recording of it, feel free, submit your prayer requests. We would love to uphold your ministry and you personally um, in prayer. So we're going to go ahead and um, wrap up. Were there any other requests or anything that came in? Any places that I haven't seen, Isabel? No, nope, I think we're good. Okay, wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and do this. We are going to wrap up with prayer. We'll pray for Pastor Belvin, pray for all of you who are listening um, to this, um, that God just gives you such grace and mercy and clarity as you look to um, reopen your local gatherings. The church never closed. We are the church. We're not, we're not closed, um, but we also know the context in which we're talking. So we will um, pray for that 
and then we'll jump off. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, I thank you for uh, your blessings today, Lord. I thank you for everyone who was able to join us live, as well as that those who will watch it uh, through the recording. And uh, God, I just pray that you would be with them, Lord, that they would uh, sense your presence, sense your leading in their life, sense your goodness, Lord, your grace, your mercy, Lord, your steadfast love. And Lord, we just thank you for who you are. And Lord, for um, the opportunity that you've given us to be used by you, Lord, we surrender to you, our expectations, our schedule, um, Lord, our lives, Lord, we surrender to you. And Lord, we desire to be used um, by you, Lord, to accomplish your will. So God, I pray that, um, Lord, during this time that you would, um, Lord, help us to rest in you and abide in you. And Lord, to walk with you daily, to talk with you all throughout the day, Lord, all these little cares of life that maybe we don't bring to you. God, I pray that you would put that on our mind through your spirit, Lord, to lead us, Lord, to be talking with you all throughout the day. So Lord, I pray, pray that you would be with Pastor Melvin, Lord, be with all the pastors across the globe, Lord, that are navigating these unique times of reopening those local gatherings. So, Lord, I pray that you would uh, give them much grace, much mercy. Lord, give them clarity on what that looks like. Lord, I pray that you would work through those different local uh, congregations. Lord, that they would give grace. Lord, during this time, that those who do feel led to attend locally, God, that you would um, Lord, keep them safe, keep them healthy. And Lord, also, Lord, help them to apply much grace to those who just aren't quite there yet, for whatever the reason might be. So God, I, I ask that um, you would use them, Lord, to reach souls for you, Lord, to teach and disciple those, Lord, under their care, into, uh, Lord, a right relationship with you and who you are and an accurate view of who you are. And Lord, because of that, Lord, that their lives will be radically changed and that they will seek to, yeah, to serve you, Lord, and to live for you fully, fully surrendered to you. So God, I ask that again, Lord, I just thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for technology. I thank you for the opportunity you've given us and the calling on our lives, Lord, to minister to the church to your church. And God, I pray that you would uh, bless those efforts, bless those who hear my voice. God, I pray that you would give them just a sense of peace and understanding of your goodness, Lord, during this time. So Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you all for joining us today. I'm already, I'm fired up now. I can't wait till next Thursday. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait till next Thursday or not. This is, uh, this has been great. Um, but thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Isabel. Any, any other things we need to, to share before we jump off? No. All right. No. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. You're in our prayers. Again, if you have any questions that you'd like us to address um, in future episodes, please put them below. And we look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Until then, God bless, and we'll see you all soon. Is your church website a source of pain and frustration? Well, I have great news for you. Those days are over. I'm Ron Gibson, the co-founder of ChurchSpring, and I'm excited to show you the most intuitive, affordable, and yes, frustration-free church website platform on the planet. Welcome to ChurchSpring. Organizing your navigation has never been easier. With our inline editing and drag and drop capabilities, you can reorganize your menus in no time. Want to add a slider to the homepage? Simply select a slider layout, customize the content, click save, and you're done. Ready to take your homepage up a notch by adding a video background? Just go to the background menu, choose the video you want, and that's it. You're ready to go. See something that needs updated on your website? No need to mess with a difficult back-end system. Just click on the content, make your changes, click save, and it's live. 
Is managing your church calendar a time-consuming and painful endeavor? With ChurchSpring, managing your online church calendar is an absolute breeze. Click to add an event, enter the details, add registration if desired, set it to repeat if needed, and click save. It's incredibly simple. Now it's time to leverage the power of social media to promote your event, sermon, or blog post. With the Church Spring Social Scheduler, simply create your social media posts in seconds and will automatically post to your ministry social media channels. Isn't that awesome? Just think of all the time this powerful feature will save you. Do you live video stream your services? No problem. That's integrated into the settings of each event. Update it and the countdown clock begins. Adding sermons to your site or podcast feed doesn't have to be as strenuous as writing them. Just choose your file, add some details while it uploads, click save, and it's ready to play. But Ron, what happens when I'm ready to give my website a fresh new look? I'm glad you asked. As a member of ChurchSpring, you get full access to our entire library of premium church website designs. You can simply click and change your website's entire design with just a click of a button. It's really that easy. This is just a quick sampling of ChurchSpring's many powerful features. Want to see more? Great! Visit churchspring.com forward slash demo to join me for an in-depth look at more of ChurchSpring's top features such as online giving, live video streaming, and much, much more. Visit us online at churchspring.com forward slash demo. Welcome to the most intuitive, affordable, and free church website platform on the planet. Are you ready to go? Great. Sign up for your seven day free trial now and launch your brand new church website in just 90 seconds flat. Simply visit churchspring.com forward slash go to launch your new website today.